you'll notice right here, this is right within AutoCAD. And again, in leveraging the factory design suite, I can continue to use my existing um, AutoCAD layout. But what I want to do is kind of um, take a look at designing uh, a new welding cell. And you can see I've kind of um, isolated, I've created, in this case, an XREF uh, of where that new cell should, should exist. So if you're familiar with XREF, if that's the way that you like to work, you can continue to use that type of a workflow. You can continue to use AutoCAD as you know it. Uh, but in this case, uh, I'm going to be leveraging it throughout the entire factory design suite. And I'll show you how that works in a second. All right, so what I'm going to do now is, again, leverage another um, yeah, another new set of um, tools within the factory design suite called the Asset Browser. And Joe was starting to mention the Asset Browser before. What the Asset Browser is, is uh, hundreds of factory design and factory equipment that we can leverage as a part of this process. So just by taking a look really quickly, you'll see there are hundreds, and there's hundreds more in the cloud that I can start to, to leverage. So if I wanted to look for specific uh, processing equipment, you can see I can just kind of scroll through this list, you know, find the specific welding machine that I'm looking for. Uh, it might be local. The ones with circles are located in the cloud. There's a lot of equipment. There's a lot of material that's out there, and the factory design suite you know, just gives us a, um, a, an easier way to leverage and create that data. So what I'm going to do now is start to design again in, in uh, 2D. I want to start to lay out. Um, I want to start to lay out my new welding station. So you'll see here again. I'm just dragging and dropping. I'm grabbing stuff right from this asset library and placing it into my model. It's uh, very easy, very quick for me to be able to you know reference equipment that we already have in an existing library, or maybe create our own. And I'll talk a little bit about how we do that later. So I've gone through, I've added in a, um, a welding station. I'm also going to put in here um, the base for uh, for a couple robots. And what I wanted to point out is that if you take a look in the asset library, this asset has multiple different what are called variants. And a variant in this case might be you know, different product lines or different sizes. So you'll see there's a 100 inch, there's a 72 inch, and there's a 120 inch um, platform for this robot. And it's very quick and easy for me just to take in the asset, right click on it, and change, and you'll see that automatically, dynamically, uh, that's going to go through uh, and update for me. Very similar to you know, dynamic blocks if you're you know, a long time AutoCAD user, but I'm going to show you kind of where uh, the factory design suite and its uh, utilities kind of take that type of functionality and really take it to the next level. So I'm going through, I'm just going to continue to um, lay out my facility, and again, I'm just doing it by leveraging these assets and dragging and dropping them very quickly and easily. Uh, into my um, my layout, and you'll see I have the ability to just kind of drop and move them around using AutoCAD um, tools and functions like you used to move, copy, rotate. All of that stuff can still be very very easily done. But again, I'm doing it with what are called factory assets uh, at this point. Okay, so again, just kind of going through, just roughing something out, I'm laying something out really quickly. But ultimately, what I want to do uh, is to move this forward. I want to start to look at now, what are the implications? How does this work um, in, in 3D as well? But what's most important about the factory design suite is that I can continue to use 2D when it makes sense, right? There's certainly a lot of instances, there's a lot of great reasons, you know, why 2D is perfect, right? To lay something out, I just want to use 2D. But then, as Joe was saying earlier, there's a lot of uh, instances where we really need to start visualizing in 3D. We really need to um, take advantage and, and, and start to look at the height. Are there any interferences? Are there ways that we can better optimize um, our cell or maybe our entire facility uh, by taking advantage of the Z direction? Okay, so the last thing that I want to do is I'm going to add in a couple of conveyors here right out of the asset library. So again, I want to go um, right into the system assets. These are all assets that come out of the box. You'll see a wealth of different conveyors that I can leverage straight inclines. I have spiral conveyors, wise versions. I have a lot of different ways that I can lay this out. What I've been doing is just kind of leveraging some favorites, right? Some some ones that uh, you know I know everybody used in this presentation, but again, it's a great way for me to go ahead uh, and, and have them right at my and right at my fingertips. If there's assets that I use kind of all of the time, this is a great way to do that. All right, so now that I've kind of quickly in AutoCAD into the roughed out this new facility, what I want to do now is leverage another one of the tools within the factory design suite, and that's this sync functionality, which is going to be you know, really a major theme throughout this entire presentation. So what this sync button is going to do is it's going to take my 2D layout and it's going to automatically replace those 2D assets with 3D versions, 3D versions of those assets. So anything that I've laid out from the asset library in 2D can quickly and dynamically be um, automatically changed to a 3D representation uh, of that asset, again, by using the tools and using uh, the assets that are inside. 
network can be customized and published to that library. So you can see here, again, everything that I just created that I laid out in 2D was automatically replaced with that 3D representation. And now for, you know, maybe some people out there that are you know, strictly 2D or, or have used AutoCAD for a long time, you know, uh, uh, often, you know, I'll have conversations with people where, you know, they wonder how easy uh, or maybe how difficult is it for me to go ahead and use um, 3D. I'm not 